Today I'm going to take a 3D part I downloaded for mounting a Home Assistant green to the wall and then I'm going to use some 3M command strips and a sneak preview on a close-up of those. Not long ago I purchased a Home Assistant green box to start my journey toward home automation. And I want to mount that to the wall in our utility room because that's a central location in our house. That's also where I have the router and the switch for the internet. And it seemed like a good location. I searched the internet and found a part, which you can see right there, that is designed specifically to mount a Home Assistant green to the wall. Now this part had slots for screws or nails. I had also recently purchased some uh, 3M command strips and you can see what they look like there and I'll have more on that later. To be able to mount them to the wall without uh, making any holes. Not like that it really mattered in the utility room whether I, I had holes but that's what I wanted to do. So. I'll show you what I did and then show you more about the, the close-up that is shown here. And then I'll show you some of the CAD work that I did modifying someone else's design. It should be pretty easy to install this bracket that I 3D printed onto the back of this. And the idea is that this bracket will go on here and then I'll mount it to the wall with some of these uh, 3M command strips. Uh, one of them will go right there, and then the other one will go onto the wall. So this should be a pretty easy change. Just uh, need to unscrew these, and then replace the screws with uh, longer screws. Then I want to make sure that this side is down which will there be like this. And I don't need this to be uh, very snug because making it too snug would break the uh, plastic. But there it is, and it's all set to go. I also have this Zigbee dongle. They recommend attaching it via this extension cable, because apparently if you plug it directly into the Home Assistant uh, circuit board, it can cause interference. So because this is going to be separate, I wanted a separate mount, and so I 3D printed this little bracket. This just slides in like so, and it's held securely enough, but it moves in and out quite easily as well. So I'll just use another of these command strips on the back of that. So now that I have these both set up, let me install the command strips. And I assume these are the same, so they're held on with Velcro, as you can see. I'll put one strip on the back of each of these, and then I have another set of these that I'll use for the wall. I got an opportunity to get some time with an industrial digital microscope, and this is a close-up of the command strips. They're not the loops that I expected, the hooks, etc., that you would see on Velcro, but rather, if you look closely, they look like they're little mushrooms. I'll cover a lot more about this microscope in some future episodes. Okay, so these are now ready for me to mount on the wall strips and then attach them to the wall. If I take a look at uh, this closet right here, this is where I have all of the internet. Uh, so I have the router, the switch, etc. And so this is connected uh, to a cable and power inside there. So that means in terms of where I put this, I could put it over here, but that's getting close to the electrical panel. I could put it over here, or 
And I think this is where I'll, I mean, well, I was thinking I'd put it up there, but then that kind of gets in the way. Unless I tuck the cords inside, I hadn't thought about that option. Yeah, actually that's not too bad. So I think I'll uh, put it above there. And so I'm gonna reposition the camera. And that will also allow me to put the dongle even higher, which should give it uh, better coverage of the house. We made the uh, utility room uh, pretty small because it doesn't need to be very large. And as a result, lighting is a bit of a challenge in here. So I have some lights here. I have another light over here. Hopefully that's going to be enough. What I'm gonna do is first is to take one of these command strips and peel off the adhesive protective backing. And then I'm going to use a level to make sure that I get this reasonably close to level. And then, and about centered, so that looks like a good location right there. Now, the nice thing about using these uh, strips right here is that they're removable. So if I don't like this location, it's easy enough to change it. And I'm not putting any holes in here. Now, given that this is a utility room, it doesn't really matter if I put holes in it, but this makes me feel better. So now, I'll just get these lined up, push, and one of the things I realized is that I this wobbles a little bit because I uh, have the backing proud, and I really needed to make it slightly recessed to have room for the strip. That's something I might fix at some point in the future, but for now that's good enough. The next thing I want to do is to put the, the holder for this somewhere up here. That looks uh, pretty good to me. It looks like I need to position the camera a little bit higher, so I'll do that and then get that one mounted. Okay, so deciding again where this will go. Let's see, yeah, you can see that. So right there looks like a good location. So I'll take the backing off this one. I'm gonna just ever so slightly tack one corner on so that I can get in, in here with the level and then I can nudge it. So you can see I can nudge it. So I'll get the level in here and then nudge it until it's vertical and then just push it down. Now I can take this other piece, push it in place with the Velcro, and there we go. Installation. As I say, this might bug me enough so that I redo it, you know, we'll see what I think about it uh, after a little while but it's going to be okay for now. And the nice thing about this, if I push it in enough, so what this told me is that I didn't push this in enough, but I need to move the uh, cords around a little bit, so I'm going to do that now, and then bring you in after I've moved all the cords around. So as long as you don't go and push on this and discover that it wiggles, this actually works pretty well. And so I'm mostly happy with this, the cords disappear, so they're not hanging all over the place. The home assistant is not dangling by the cables. And then the dongle is high enough that it should be able to get around the house fairly well. So, I guess a thumbs up. Or maybe not. I mean, it really bugged me that it wiggled back and forth. I do want this being a little bit proud, and the reason I want it to be a little bit proud is so that I can push this in effectively to the wall but it was a little bit too proud. So what I did is make a new version. This is the same, but I added a little standoff. So it should be about even when it's on the wall. And so I'll take another piece of the command strip, put it on there, and then put it back onto the Home Assistant green. The other thing that I did which you may have noticed, is that this had little standoffs that went down in here. But I realized that that's not really needed. 
And that allowed me to print this uh, so that it's just one-sided without supports. So that's the back side, completely flat, and then that's the front side, and that prints very easily. So make sure I have it done correct. Yes, that's correct. Let's give this another try. I'm going to line up the command strip, push it into the Velcro, and it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. Um, I didn't want it to be completely tight because then it would be hard to get the Velcro on and off. And you can see that works quite nicely. Okay, now I'm happy with it, or at least enough. I'm going to leave it as is now. There's the original version that I downloaded, and I'll put a link to this file below. I had the option to download different formats, and I downloaded the Fusion 360 file. And the advantage of doing that is it gives me all of the components in the history, and that makes it easier to modify it. So if I go to the version that I modified, as you can see here, I'll go back in the history and show you the changes that I made. The first thing is I, I went back before the chamfers, and you can see here that this is the version that was before the chamfers. And then I added this sketch. And if we look at the sketch, it's a pretty simple sketch where I'm just creating this rectangle, which is about the right size for the command strip. And then after that, I add some fillets to it. And then we bring the chamfer back in that was there before. And now the chamfer also covers the new part that I added. Other than that, I didn't change anything about this design as well. But I did also add the support for the dongle. So here you can see I'm adding the mount, and this is adding the bottom of the mount so that I can decide what the rough dimensions are and how thick it's going to be. And then on top of that, I added another component where I modeled the dongle itself. So the first piece of that is to take some dimensions. Here I'm taking the width and the height and then estimating the radiuses there. And then this is where I'm doing an approximation of the cord that is going to come out of the bottom. So that gives me the dongle itself. And then the next thing is I started to model the, uh, the carrier. And let me zoom in. And I did this by doing an offset from the model that I had for the dongle, so I could control what the distance would be. And you can see I have a half a millimeter gap in there so that it won't be too tight. You know, it might be a little loose, but it won't be too tight. And then just added a place for the cords to go through and to hold that in place uh, with gravity because it's going to be in a position like this. So that'll keep it in place. And then just added some uh, fillets to make it look a little bit nicer. Now one of the things I encountered when I was printing this is that I was getting problems here where it was not sticking to the bed. And you can see why. This comes to a point. And so that meant it was not actually printing anything on the first layer. It was not wide enough to be able to print anything until the second layer or the third layer. And the second layer is certainly not going to stick very well to the plate if there's nothing underneath it. So that's something that I will tackle with the second version of the design. This is the final version of the model that I printed and is currently on the wall. And most of the changes are pretty straightforward. The one change that was a little bit more involved is providing enough material around this chamfer for the screws and the outside chamfer so that there was enough material to print around that. Now, Given that I changed this so that it prints this way rather than this way, I probably didn't need to do that. In any event, I'll show you what I did. If I go back to here, this is the original outside of the part right here, and it has the nice smooth lines. I added this section here, or these sections, to make it wider. Again, because I was originally printing it 
the other way around and I needed to add that section down here as well as down there and then I mirrored both of these to the other side. Now that results in, if I go back here, so that results in some areas that have a little bit of a kink, they're not as smooth as before. If this is something that I saw because it was visible, then I might care. But this is behind the Home Assistant green, so it's not really visible. And so sometimes you just have to say it's good enough and ship it. And so that's what I did with this. Now, if I were to change this yet again, I might try to make this thinner. Or actually what I'd probably do is increase the thickness of this so that this can stay strong enough. Not that it really needs to be that strong. And then this could be a greater distance between these two slopes. But sometimes you just have to say it's good enough and move on to the next project. And that's what I'm doing here. If it does bug me, which I doubt it will because I almost never go into the utility room, I can always modify this and make it better. That's one of the great things about 3D printing. That was a fairly simple project and it gives you some idea of some of the challenges you sometimes run into with parts created by other people and modifying them. You, you can almost always do something, so it's not a bad way to start with someone else's part. In a future episode, I'm going to show another case where I looked at someone else's part and basically created my own part from scratch. Sometimes that's better. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am hoping to get back on a more regular schedule of creating videos. Things were really crazy at work for a while. Things seem to be settling down. I've also recorded enough material from this industrial microscope, so I should be able to create three episodes from that. So I hope you enjoy that when it comes out. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.